Okay, so we've been talking about cooperation within a tumor, and you were saying that some cells, even though they don't reproduce the fastest, can nonetheless stay around because they help other cells within the same tumor. I don't understand how that can work. Well, because we have evolved as multicellular organisms, our cells have been designed, if you will, by natural selection to help each other in many ways. Well, they've been designed to stop reproducing and stop dividing at the right time so there's no cancer. That's the part one, right? Absolutely. But within a malignancy, within a tumor, are all the cells the same or are some of them helping other cells within the tumor? Some are helping other cells. And they're doing this often by secreting chemicals that help the, help the cell that's producing them. Mm -hmm. But if those chemicals are can diffuse through the fluid that the cells live in, the beneficial effects may not be limited just to the cell that created them, but may also be shared with its immediate neighbors. So if secreting that substance is expensive, you would expect those cells would divide more slowly than other cells and would therefore go away relatively. Is that what happens or do they stay around? If you only consider the cost, then the cells that are paying that cost should disappear. That's correct. But if there are crucial benefits, if, if no cell can survive unless it has this chemical in its environment, then the producer cells will be among the few survivors. So if the other cancer cells need something and only these other cells make it, then they're really dependent on each other. Correct. So does this have implications for possible new strategies for cancer chemotherapy? That's right. If we, if we target, if we use therapies that most, I'll back up and say most of our therapies are searching for ways to kill the cancer cells. That's the obvious thing to do. If these cells are making trouble, find a drug that will kill them. And kill the worst ones. Yep, and kill them as fast as possible. Kill as many as possible, as fast as possible. Okay. That's the... Makes, makes sense. Yeah, it's intuitively obvious, and it's, it's a very good way to, to reduce the problem as soon as... So we have a lot of these kind of drugs. I'll call them cytotoxins, cytomine cells. So these are cell... So cell killers. Cell killers, yeah. So when we apply, we have a lot of them at our disposal, and they work great. If somebody has a tumor... If, if they can kill every single cell, fine. Yep, but, but they never right. can. They never, so far, we, we've never achieved that. When we treat with a cytotoxin, it kills a lot of cells, maybe most of the cells. The tumor shrinks, and we're very happy. The only cells that are left behind are the cells that were genetically different because of, because of mutations in a way that made them less vulnerable to this drug. So after a few cell generations, we're left with nothing of the tumor except for the cells that resist our drug. Whoa, so the ones that aren't gonna be killed by the drugs take over. Exactly right. Sounds All exactly like antibiotic resistance. Exactly, it is the same scenario. So is this why we use multiple drugs to treat cancer instead of just one at a time? It is, yep. And that just as that become more, it's been recognized as effective and become a basic tool in fighting infections, infectious disease, the same thing has happened in cancer biology. More and more we're turning to combinations of drugs in cancer therapy. For so when I was a medical person. student, on occasion, as we were treating kids with Hodgkin's disease, someone would say, we've got to use only one drug so we can save a second drug in case the first one doesn't work. What do you think about that? That might make sense if you knew nothing about evolution, which probably was so the this case. is an unfortunate place where we really should know about evolution. And the, what, what nature teach, teaches us our errors, when we try to use one drug against infectious disease, it stops working. When we try to use one drug against cancer, it stops working in both cases because the multiplying cells that we tried to kill are subjected to selection by a drug. You could call it natural selection or unnatural selection, but they it's are being selected. Selection. Okay. Yes. The ones that don't get killed by this kind of drug survive in the absence of competition. Now they flourish and the, the tumor that had shrunk suddenly grows back into a, a worse tumor. A worse tumor 
It may not be worse in every way, but we can predict that it will be unaffected by the drug that used to work.